Okay, let's take a look at this one. So um, the amount of time that people spend at Grover Hot Springs is normally distributed with mean 76 minutes, standard 17. Suppose one person at the hot springs is randomly chosen. The amount of time person spent at the hot springs round all answers to four. Okay, so here we go. So the, uh, the mean is 76 and the standard deviation is 17. And it says, um, find the probability that a random set to person stays longer than 97. So that's, um, that's uh, not too bad. So how do, we, how do we do that? I'm gonna draw the normal curve here. And um, like that. The middle is 76, because that's the average. And so 97 would be somewhere way over here. And longer, longer than 97 would be to the right. So longer than 97 is to the right. So that, so then what we're gonna do is normal CDF, and we're gonna have to put in um, what it's gonna ask you for in the normal CDF, depending on whether you have the new calculator or the older kind of TI, it's going to ask you for the lower or left, and then the upper or right, and then the mean and the standard. So the, the and when it says left and right or lower and upper, it means the left and the right of the uh, shaded piece. So the left and the right of the piece that's shaded, it's that piece. Now, how did I know that piece was shaded? Well, because it said longer than 97, which means to the right of 97. So the left edge is just 97. The right edge is gonna be infinity because the shading goes, whenever the shading goes off the edge, that's infinity. Off the edge to the right is positive infinity. If it ever goes off the edge to the left, that'd be negative infinity. Because negative numbers go far to the left, positive numbers far to the right. So this is infinity, and the way we deal with infinity is we just put in a bunch of nines, and then to put in the mean, 76, standard deviation, 17, and you'll get an answer. So there's part B. Part C, I wanna hurry on and get to part D, which is the trickiest part, but I'll do part C first off. Part C here says, the Park Service is considering offering a discount for the 4% of their patrons who spend the least time in the hot springs. What is the number there, basically? So 4% who spend the least. Now, now how do I do that? I mean, in fact, I can probably just squeeze it in right here. So 4% who spend the least time. How do we, how do we deal with that? Well, got to draw the normal curve. It's always about the bell curve. Here's the middle. What was the average again? Uh, and mine was 76 was the middle. Okay. So now where is the 4% who spend the least? Well, that's got to be like way down here in the bottom. It's got to be this region down here. That's 4%. They want us to find this amount of time that marks out the bottom 4%. How did I know that was bottom 4% instead of like middle? Like how did I know it wasn't middle 4% or top 4%? How do I know those aren't right? And it's because it says least time. So there, it's the bottom, it's the bottom 4%. So notice they're giving me a percent. Whenever they give us a percent, we use inverse norm. And so to use inverse norm, it says percentage to the left. Um, no, that's not right. It says area to the left, doesn't it? And so area, oops, area to the left. And so what is the area to the left? That's going to be the 0.04, right? That's the amount of area. You got to make it a decimal. That's the amount of area to the left of that spot. And then they ask us for the mean and the standard deviation. The mean is the 76, the standard deviation is 17. Hit the buttons on your calculator, you'll get an answer for part B. Finally, 
or I mean, sorry, that's a uh, part C. That's part C. And then now, lastly, part D. How are we going to do part D? Well, part D talks about finding Q1, Q3, and the IQR. So let's let me bring that on down. So for part D here, they want. Let me start with Q1. They want me to find Q1. So let me again draw the normal curve. Put the middle on there. What was the middle? It was 76. Okay. So it's all about remembering what Q1 is from earlier times in the course. So what is Q1? Remember what that is? Q1 is the end of the first quarter. So like if it's a football game or a basketball game, we're talking about the end of the first quarter. So that's going to be the first 25%, isn't it? So if I like put a line right there, it's this right here, um, 0.25. That's this mark right here is Q1. They're wanting me to find that spot right there that marks out the first 25%. That's what Q1 means. It's the end, it's the mark at the end of the first quarter. So in any kind of statistics problem we, we deal with, whenever they ask us for Q1, they are telling us to mark out the first 25%. So how do we find that? Well, they're giving us a percent. So we're gonna do inverse norm again. And we're gonna go area to the left. And so what is the area to the left? 0.25. And um, right, because that's the area to the left of that spot. And then they're going to ask us for the mean 76 and the standard deviation. I already forgot. What is it? Uh, 17. 17. And we should get an answer for Q1. I'll tell you what I get. I'm going to do it right now on my calculator. So inverse mean. I'm getting 64.55, no. Five, three, three, six, seven, four. All right, and now they also want me to find Q3. So where's Q3? Well, it's going to be about right here. Q3 is the end of the third quarter. That's what Q3 means. Q1 means the end of the first quarter. Q3 means the end of the third quarter. So if you're at the end of the third quarter, so if I'm watching a football game, and my wife says, hey, how, is the game almost over? And I say, I'm at the end of the third quarter. What does that mean? What percentage of the game is over at the end of the third quarter? All right, this is 0.25 here and 0.25 here. So that means putting that all together, that's 0.75, right? At the end of the third quarter, you are 75% of the game is over. So the area to the left is 0.75. And so you put that in, the mean is 76, the standard deviation is 17. So if you do all that in your calculator, you'll get the answers. And so let me see what I get. First norm. I'm getting 87.4663257.4. So there's the Q3. So we got the Q1 and the Q3. And then the last thing they ask is the IQR, which is inner quartile range. And that it simply means how far between the quartiles. You just have to subtract Q3 minus Q1. So just put those 
numbers into your calculator, that's what I'm gonna do, and subtract them. So that's coming out 22.93265. I'm sure that's plenty of decimals. I don't remember how many places they wanted us to round. So IQR is inner quartile range, just how far between the quartiles. It's just, it's how far from between Q3 and Q1, there it is, IQR, right up there. It's just how far between, how far um, this is right here, between the two quartiles, inner quartile range. You just subtract the two quartiles. And so there we go. Is that making sense? Yes, it does. Um, but the funny thing is, on my question, you know, I did with exactly what you did, and um, both Q1 and Q3 are the same numbers. Q1 and Q3 are the same numbers? Yeah, they both calculated to be the same number, so it's going to equal zero. Um, I don't think I did anything wrong. I did change the decimal, you know, 0.25 on the Q1 and then 0.75 on the Q3. And they came back.